TLO, what's poppin'? We are on KICKKICK.com. We are live. By the time you see this, we probably won't be, man. So you can just leave a like, comment, you know what I'm saying? Subscribe. Turn on your little post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, if you do happen to miss the live, this is where any highlights will be and things of that nature. Uh, we also got merch. I got it on every day. You know what I'm saying? Go cop it. Check it out. See what you like. Um, and we also got the Patreon. We post five days a week. No weekends. So whoever's in the comments talking about some missed two days. No, no. We don't post on the weekends, buddy. Stop making stuff up. <laughs> Anywho. Um... Don't forget the Discord as well. The link to this stuff is all down in the description. It's in a link called Linktree. So this is from Behind Bars TV with Ricky Kellen. What happens to in high society prison? It's a good one. It's only 12 minutes. We don't need no more. Let's get into it then, I guess. Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. What's in good? this episode I'm going to talk about what happens to terrorists in prison. Okay. Now this is another one that one of my subscribers had asked for on like the last few previous videos that I've done when I've been talking about different people. I've said in the comments if you want us to make a video about a certain topic or anything in prison drop it in the comments but again if you have another topic that you want me to cover drop it in the comments and I will get round to it. But what happens to terrorists in prison? Well, I'll talk about my experience with terrorists in prison to start with. And Whoever dropped that question, that's a good question. Because we always hear about them in every other like documentary. But we never, like, you know what I'm saying? It never gets into it. People that have been following me channel from the start, that have seen the documentary that I was in here, HMP Franklin, will know all about it. When I was 21 year old, I was sent to here, HMP Franklin which is a maximum security prison, which holds terrorists, murderers, hitmen, gangsters, you name it, it's in there. So the, f the second day that I was in that prison, I was in the kitchen and I seen a terrorist get in hot, a pan of hot oil tipped over his head. And the terrorist who was called Darren Barrett, oh and he was the head of the Al Qaeda in the UK, and he was plotting to blow up bombs. We heard, I heard about this dude up in different parts of the UK and he was serving a sentence of life with a recommendation of 40 years. Now I was in the kitchen on the second day of my arrival into this prison and someone that I knew in the prison took us into the kitchen and we were cooking a steak because you can cook your own food in Franklin prison. So I was Maximum security prison that houses T's, M's and gangsters. And you can cook your own steak. We're in the kitchen getting the steak and everything prepared. There was a t the terrorist, Darren Barrett, and another fellow that was in the kitchen together. And Darren Barrett was washing his dishes in the sink. And we looked over, me and the lad that was in the kitchen, and we're seeing a big pan of oil just bubbling away, heating away on the stove. And we looked at each other and thought, this seems a bit queer. So just as we thought that, someone came walking in the kitchen, picked the pan of oil up, walked up behind the terrorist and just tipped it over the back of his head and all of his skin and everything and his hair was just peeling off and you could just see it running down the back of his head. The lad that done it walked out the kitchen. <clears throat> the terrorist actually went after him with the other lad that was in the kitchen, who was a rare Jamaican fella. And the two of them went after the lads um, to go and set about him after he'd actually been hot oiled. And that was my first encounter with a terrorist in the prison. So when I cook bacon and the grease pop up and hit me in the stomach or in the arm, it hurt. So bro, you said his skin and his hair was... And what actually happens to them? Now I will tell another story what happened to a few weeks after this. There was, because there was two terrorists on the wing at the time, there was Darren Barrett 
And another terrorist that was in the prison was Omar Khayyam, who was also serving a life sentence. And a couple of weeks after Darren Barrett got hot oiled, this other terrorist was feeling quite vulnerable and feeling like he was going to be under attack. So he took it upon himself to go in the kitchen, get his own pan of hot boiling oil. And he came up behind a lad, a Jordy lad called Malcolm Crudus. And as Malcolm was sitting with a couple of his Yo. Jordy pals sitting eating his tea, this terrorist came up behind him and tipped a pan of boiling oil over the top of his head. And afterwards, his head swelled up like a big watermelon, big swelled up like that off all the burns. And the only reason the terrorist done this, Malcolm hadn't done anything wrong. He wasn't involved in the other attack. He was just an innocent person sitting, eating his tea. And the reason why the terrorist done this was because he was in fear for his own life. And he didn't want to be in that prison. So he'd done this to get a move because obviously when attacks like this happen in prison, the first thing they do is move the perpetrator to another prison so that they don't get attacked or they don't become in further violence. Oh, but he maxed out on dude. He was innocent bystander. He just, he did the most to him. So a lot of the terrorists that did end up in Franklin prison, because this is up in the Northeast and it was predominantly a white prison, it was a place where they didn't want to be because they felt vulnerable, they felt under attack. So a lot of the terrorists that were up this way wanted to be back down at places like White Moor, Long Lawton, yeah, even Full Sutton, but Full Sutton was still a bit far. And the, um, these terrorists did feel more at home when they were down places like Whitemore and Long Lawton, because down those prisons, there is a lot more black people and Muslim people than there is white people. And the, um, <clears throat> but again, down in Belmosh prison, I knew a, um, a story when I was in Franklin where a couple of terrorists. Bro has. He was locked up for like 20, 30 years of his life, wasn't he, this guy? A good amount of time. So I'm not surprised, actually, that he got this many stories. Terrorists that had come in, they were walking around. I think it was on the unit, the Cartier unit in Belmosh. And they were walking around with a bit of a swagger. And I'll not mention the person's name who'd done it, but he, um, he actually battered a couple of them. And this person's got a massive name in the Cartier system. So nothing really happened back to him. There was no revenge took on him, which is normally the case because if you attack a terrorist in prison, which is in the high security state, the Cartier prisons, at some point throughout the sentence, you will become attacked either from him himself or the Muslim brothers. Because in prisons in the high security state, um, obviously they're all these terrorists that I'm speaking about, the Muslim terrorists, when you get in the high security estate, they've got what in the high security estate, you would call it a so-called gang, the Muslim brothers, where they all look out for each other. It's See, that's what I was, that was my next question. So they want to get switched to different prisons because their brothers wasn't around the, the you know, the, 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 that group of people. But they still stand behind them even though that they're uh, uh, this word up here? They should be automatically banned from the brotherhood or something. One for all and all for one. They're all no going through the what? box. It doesn't matter whether they're a terrorist or not. They're still one of the Muslim brotherhood. So you could come across a, a black Muslim who was born and bred in this country, in Britain, in England. And he will become brothers with the terrorist, even though the terrorist might have been trying to kill someone who could have been a member of his family, like the Manchester Arena bombings. It doesn't matter because they're all Muslims and they're all stick together in the prison system. So if you attack a Muslim in the That's prison crazy. system, sorry, not a Muslim, a Muslim. When it comes to building a business, every detail matters. No, nah, because that that's, you gotta, he gotta specify Our team uses artlist.io. That's how it is in some of the US prisons too. But I'm not sure on the exact politics, like he knows the exact politics, obviously of you know the brotherhood all for one no matter what i don't know if it's an all for one situation as well like depending on the charge but okay muslim terrorist in the prison system you will be in fear of your life when you go to one of the other prisons because unless you get put on protection or get kept in the segregation unit or in one of the cartier units you will become attacked at some point 
because the Muslims in the high security state or the majority, and like I've mentioned, they're all stick together. So they are what you would class as one of the strongest forces in the high security state. So if you become involved with attacking a terrorist, you will be getting something happen Turn throughout your class. sentence unless you get released from the Katia prisons. But the majority of people in these places are lifers and they've got to head down through the different categories, category B's and C's. And the trouble follows wherever they go because there's the terrorists and the, and the Muslims have got friends throughout the Kat B's and the Kat C's. So it will follow wherever they go. But again, as I've just mentioned, it's the same for the terrorists. When the terrorists come into the prison system, they will become attacked at some point by somebody throughout the sentence because, as you can imagine, some of the mostly the, the white lads that are in the prison system, they will not tolerate seeing these terrorists swagging about the wings and they will be attacked. Even the likes I don't of think nobody will tolerate that, man. The only people that it sound like is tolerate them in the prison system is those of their own. You know what I'm saying? That Adebolajo, he's been attacked in one of the prisons. I can't remember the extent of the injuries, but he did get attacked, and he's also been attacked off the prison officers. So if it's not the prisoners that attack them. They will get attacked off the prison officers, but obviously the prison officers do it in a way where it's not just, it doesn't just look like an unprovoked attack. They maybe provoke the terrorist to do something where they're all going the pad to wrap them up. And when they're in the pad, out the way of the cameras, the prison officers will give them the hiding of the life. And I did read up on one about where the terrorist got stamped all over inside of this pad and he did try to press charges, but obviously, if it's 10 screws against one, they're going to take the screw's name over the terrorist. Right. But um, a lot of these screws, the prison officers, are ex-squaddies. A lot of them have been in the army. So they will give it, they will make them have a bit of a hard time. But again, some of these terrorists that have got nothing to lose, some of them doing life without parole or doing a, maximum, a minimum of a 40-year tariff or a 50-year tariff, if they feel like they're getting violated in prison by the prison staff or anything or the other inmates, they won't think twice, like Omar Khayyam did, of going and tipping hot oil over you or slitting your throat, stabbing your eye out. So these are the type of things that they're coming up against and what they've got to think about. Because the prison staff, it was in the FHMP Franklin documentary, nothing to do with the terrorist, this one, but obviously when he felt threatened by the staff, he was from down south, a Londoner, a uh, Muslim lad, he felt threatened by the staff in Franklin prison and he felt as if they were bullying him and he actually went on to stab one of the screws but when it came out in court, he went to court over it and he actually got, yeah, it was a knock, I think he got a knock guilty, he didn't get charged with that, I don't know if the case got chucked out or he got knocked guilty and he did, he obviously admitted it was blatantly that he'd stabbed the screw but because it must have had plenty of evidence and it was backed up by witnesses on the wing of the Muslim brothers that he was getting victimized and feeling vulnerable and the only thing he So what he got a self defense charge on a screw? He could do to protect himself for that's what he thought was by stabbing a prison officer and he actually got not guilty for it in court. But um again I'm just giving examples of what happens to terrorists in prison because if a terrorist is feeling vulnerable, like I've just mentioned, under attack. I thought they got separated from everybody else, honestly. He will attack first. Maybe that's here, because I know they're definitely not just walking around with other people. They're separated. They got their own little wing for themselves. But um, there is down in Whitemoor prison a couple of years back where two terrorists tried to or they had a big plan where they were going to behead one of the prison officers. Where was the What? So again, people in the prison... But you got to remember if I had Sam, he said most, most in prison. Now, if you, like, if you're in prison, a lot of it is race-based. 
You stay with your race or your religion, and they're going to back you 100%. System, officers and prisoners are but that is a tough one, though. quite wary of terrorists because of the extreme lengths of violence that they will go to. So the majority of the time, they will be left alone. But again, like I've mentioned, there is psychotic people in the prison system that will not give a toss. And this is not his opinion. This is his, he's walked this and seen this. About who they are or who they've got behind them, they will attack them themselves because a lot of them, like I've mentioned, some are natural lifers, never getting out. Some are doing 40s and 50 years wrecks and they will attack other prisoners and they will attack the terrorists. But again, talking back to when the 80s and their <clears throat> When the IRA was in the prison system, obviously the IRA were terrorists who were over in this country, being in prison because of the atrocities that they had caused and things that they'd done in this country. Right, right, I agree. And if you say you've been in prison a few times, had lots of friends, but I'm not saying that they don't. St when it's wartime, they stick together. Like when it's time to rise up against something, they stick together. But I'm pretty sure they're friendly with everybody. Everybody's friendly with everybody when it, you know what I'm saying? On the wing, you want peace instead of war. They actually got on quite well in the high security state. Being in prison because of the atrocities that they had caused and things that they'd done in this country. And they actually got on quite well in the high security state. All the IRA members that were in the high security state in the 80s, and I think it might have been the 90s, um, they actually got on with the other prisoners. They all, obviously, they're all kept the cells to the cells, they're kept together. But as you can imagine, the pull that they've got on the outside and the army that they had behind them, no one wanted to mess with them. So they didn't really get any trouble, from my understanding, whilst they were in the high security state. Because I have spoke with people previously who I was in prison with when I was in Franklin, who were actually in when the IRA and they actually said the prisons were a lot better when they were in because they didn't take any shit and they didn't stand for any of the rule breaking that might happen from the prison officers and the staff. So they actually preferred it when they were in. But um, yeah, because when they was in, they had a lot. Of, he said they had a lot of pull on the outside. You play in here, you got to go home, and we still got that pull out there, outside, when you less protected. So with that mind, with that in the back of your mind, you gonna. Be cool as a prison guard. If that's the thought process you're going through. Um, I just thought I would get that one out there, people, because someone was asking it in the comments. What happens to terrorists in prison? But I think I've covered everything. And no, no, that was that was enlightening. Tell leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notice. I'm gone.